Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The periodontal chart should indicate accurately the topographic relations between teeth and surrounding periodontal structures. Schematic line drawings of the teeth are arranged in a numerical order. Separate drawings indicate the buccal, occlusal, and lingual aspects of the teeth in the maxilla, and the buccal, occlusal, and lingual aspects of the teeth in the mandible. The chart also has symbols for various conditions of importance for periodontal diagnosis, such as missing teeth, food impaction, open contact, mobility, bifurcation exposed, drifted, extrusion, and so forth. The crowns and the roots of the teeth are separated in the drawings by a line indicating the cemento enamel junctions. The horizontal lines are one millimeter apart. Bi and trifurcations are also indicated, both from the buccal and lingual aspects. The positions of the free gingival margin, including the interdental papillae and the bottom of the periodontal pockets, are related to the cemento enamel junction, which thus is the most important landmark on the chart. Chartings will be demonstrated on the six teeth, which in the PDI index represent the entire mouth. Tooth number three, nine, 12, 19, 25, and 28. The distance between the free gingival margin and the cemento enamel junction on tooth number three is determined distobuccally and mesiobuccally with a University of Michigan number aught probe. If the cemento enamel junction cannot be located due to calculus, the calculus must be removed. Accurate determination of the cemento enamel junction is of key importance. Since both the location of the free gingival margin on the chart and the amount of loss of periodontal attachment is related to this landmark. Note that the measuring probe must be tilted against the surface of the tooth to locate the cemento enamel junction by feel. On the buccal aspect, the cemento enamel junction is exposed by gingival recession, so the distance of root exposure can easily be measured. Distances from the free gingival margin to the cemento enamel junction also are measured at the distolingual, the lingual, and the mesiolingual aspects of the tooth. The measurements are transferred to the chart. First for the distal buccal, then the buccal, and mesiobuccal aspects of tooth number three. The distal lingual, the lingual, and the mesiolingual relationships of the free gingival margin to the cemento enamel junction are also recorded. The next index tooth is the left maxillary central incisor tooth number nine. The cemento enamel junction cannot be located accurately because of calculus. The calculus at the cemento enamel junction is removed. The mesiobuccal, the buccal,
buckle and distal buckle distances between the free gingival margin and the cemento enamel junction are measured with the number aught probe. The mesiopalatal, the palatal, and the distopalatal measurements are also made. Again, notice the tilt of the probe to facilitate the location of the cemento enamel junction. The measurements for tooth number nine are then transferred to the chart, starting with the mesiobuccal, buccal, and the distobuccal distances between the free gingival. Tooth number twelve is the index tooth for the left maxillary posterior segment. The probe is used on the mesiobuccal, the buccal and distobuccal aspects to measure the distances between the free gingival margin and the cemento enamel junction. The cemento enamel junction was not obscured by calculus. The mesiopalatal, the palatal, and distal palatal measurements are obtained. The mesiobuccal, buccal, and the distal buccal measurements are transferred to the chart. The mesiopalatal, the palatal, and the distal palatal measurements are also recorded. Since the regular index tooth number 19 is missing, measurements are obtained from tooth number 18 in the order indicated for the previously recorded index teeth. These measurements are transferred to the chart in the same order as they were obtained in the mouth. The cemento enamel junction is clearly visible on the next index tooth number 25. The distances from the cemento enamel junction to the free gingival margin are measured. On the lingual side, the cemento enamel junction is obscured by calculus. The calculus is removed with jacket scalers or curettes. The mesiolingual, the lingual, and the distal lingual distances are measured. The measurements from the buccal aspects of the tooth are transferred to the chart in the order they were obtained in the mouth. The lingual measurements are also transferred to the chart. The relationship between the cemento enamel junction and the free gingival margin for tooth number 28 is recorded for the mesiobuccal, the buccal, and the distobuccal aspects. Some calculus has been removed, so the mesiolingual, the lingual, and the distolingual measurements can be made for the same tooth. These measurements are then transferred to the chart in the same order they were obtained in the mouth. The lingual measurements are also transferred to the chart. Similar measurements of the gingival margin have been recorded for all the remaining teeth. The charted index points on the buccal aspect are then connected with a continuous line 
which depicts the relationships between the free gingival margin, the interdental papillae, and the cemento-enamel junction. The points are also connected on the lingual aspect of the teeth. The line is completed at the buccal aspect of tooth number 32. The vertical lines on the chart indicate missing teeth. Keeping the number aught probe parallel to the long axis of the tooth, the total crevice or pocket depths are measured at the distal buccal, the buccal, and mesiobuccal aspects. The distolingual and the mesiolingual trifurcation involvements are recorded on the chart with the symbol of an inverted V. Figures indicating pocket depth in millimeters are also recorded. The lingual and buccal aspects are recorded separately. Similar measurements for pocket depth are obtained for all the teeth and subsequently transferred to the chart. Here we see tooth number 18 being examined with a number 3 probe for possible bifurcation involvement. A periodontal chart should graphically indicate the pocket depth, position of the free gingival margins, and the extent or loss of periodontal support. All periodontal pockets have been recorded on this chart. The bi and trifurcation involvements have also been recorded. Position of the mucogingival line is surveyed. The distance between this line and the free gingival margin indicates the width of the attached gingiva. The mucogingival line is recorded in red. Measurements obtained from the mouth were transferred to the chart. The crevice and pocket areas have been filled in with solid blue, so an immediate appraisal can be made of the relationship between the mucogingival line and the bottom of the pockets. 
In some instances, the pockets extend apically to the mucogingival line. The dentition is examined for open contacts. If there is a wide open contact, the approximate distance between the adjacent teeth is measured. If a tooth has been lost, the empty space is measured to indicate any drifting or tipping of the teeth adjacent to the space. Elongation or extrusion of teeth relative to the plane of occlusion is also measured. The measurements of open contacts are transferred to the chart indicated by parallel vertical lines. The width of the edentula spaces for the missing molars is recorded. The amount of extrusion of the maxillary first molars is also recorded. Food impaction should be separately noted with a small arrow, even if there is not an open contact. Tooth mobility is tested using a scale of 0 to 3. Grade 1 indicates a slight increase in mobility. Grade 3, marked mobility. Any increase in mobility between slight and severe is recorded as 2. The mobility figures are entered in the special locations on the chart designated for each tooth. Note that the periapical lesion on the tooth tip of number 19 has been recorded. The basic periodontal part of this chart is now completed, but other pertinent information such as calculus, carious and periapical lesions, inadequate dental restorations, fixed and removable bridge work should also be recorded on this or on a separate chart. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.